सच्चिदानंद विग्रह अनादिरादिर्गोविंद सर्वण कारण चिंतामणि प्रकर सदमशकृक्ष लक्षावृतेश सुरवीर विपाल लक्ष्मी सहस्रशत संभ्रम सेव्यम गोविंद मादिपुरुषम तम हम भजा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम शांति 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 Thank you very much for your talk and our uh, final speaker on this panel is Prabhu Madan Gopal Das ji who joined ISKCON in 1991 in Nairobi Kenya he has uh, he had served over the years as the youth education and temple management director at ISKCON of New Jersey he is a graduate of the GBC College of Leadership and currently serves as the North American co-director of ISKCON Communications He lives in New Jersey with his wife Manasi Ganga Devi Dasi and son Madhav. He also works as an IT manager. And Prabhu uh, Madan uh, Gopal Das ji will talk about the multi-ethnic, multi-racial, and multi-national identity of uh, Hindus. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. It's uh, my first time here, so uh, it's a real honor to be with all of you. So my uh, presentation today is what's the day of the Prumbakam? Generational impact of multi ethnicity um, in in Hindu practitioners. So in 1965, His Divine Grace Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri Prabhupada arrived in New York City. From India, with only 40 rupees in his pocket, no dollars, no contacts, no resources. And this was his first time outside of India, and he had come by cargo ship, not in a plane. And he suffered two heart attacks on the on the right here. And all this he did at the age of 17. And the next 11 years. From nothing, he built up a massive international organization with over 100 temples and thousands of dedicated disciples. Following Bhagavad Gita and the pure lifestyle of Sanatan Dharma, without compromise, the vast majority of those, over 95%, were of non-Indian ethnicity. So we were talking about earlier, right? How many years our temples have been around? Uh, Iskand Temple in New York was founded in 1966. Now we're 56 years old, and it's, and it's been growing. <laughs> yeah, we have 750 temples. That, that blue temple you see up there is opening in a couple of years. That's about twice the size of the Taj Mahal. That's our world headquarters in India. We have 100 uh, vegetarian restaurants. We have 40 farming communities. We have over one and a half million uh, followers, and over 100,000 followers in North America alone. And over 1 billion books, magazines, and pamphlets and publications distributed in over 100 languages, all based on the pure teachings of Bhagavad Gita. So the notion of Westerners taking up Sanatan Dharma, Krishna consciousness, is a fascinating phenomenon. In particular, because they did not convert out of social pressure or under threat of violence or out of financial need. Or some other uncomfortable compulsion. You know, other religions may have used those mechanisms, but they did not. And they gave up things like meat eating, and intoxicants, and other negative habits that are that are an intrinsic part of Western life. Why? How did they do that? They took it up as a, as an out of appreciation for the compelling philosophy, the deep message, the values. 
the rich traditions and above all the pure love that they receive from their Guru, Srila Prabhupada. And today this momentum continues all over the globe as African devotees and European devotees and Australian devotees and Far East Asian devotees and North and South American devotees take up the message of the Gita into their lives. I want to give a shout out to my ISKCON colleagues from Tennessee. Right in, over there we have uh, Sriman Gali Prabhu. He's a direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He joined in the 70s. And uh, Sriman uh, uh, Murari Chandra Prabhu, also from Tennessee. So thank you. And you can see very clearly they're not of Indian descent. <laughs> so I titled this uh, talk as a generational impact of multi ethnicity in Hinduism. The reality is that most of us here are immigrants from India. And we are very concerned that our next generation and the generation after that will not take seriously their Sanatan heritage. Because when they look around and they see Westerners, they absorb that culture. And it is less and less compelling to hold on to their own culture. What I've observed is when they see other non-Indian youth, other black people, white people, taking up God consciousness based on Sanatana, the path of Gita, wanting to live a clean life, a holy life, while still having fun and still making progress in career and family, then our own children, they dive into these roots, their own roots, and become, becomes part of their existence. See, the first lesson of the Bhagavad Gita is what? Is that you are not this body. And the rest of the Gita? The rest of the Gita is how to act and behave on that understanding that you're not this body. So how can you say that we, all the souls, are brown or black or white? We are not. These are just superficial labels that we have created. We are not African, we are not Asian, we are not Americans. We are spirit souls that are eternal, connected to God, to Bhagavan. The Sanatan Dharma is universal. It's not limited to a particular geography. And this is not a new thing, this Vedic lifestyle. This religion was practiced all over the globe. It went all the way out to Northern Europe. Even today, you can find traces of it uh, in the ancient ruins, where they're worshiping Vishnu and so on. And it went to Far East as China and Japan and Indonesia. There's traces of that even today, of Bhagavatam and Ramayana. So we can certainly remarket the richness of our spiritual heritage to people from all ethnic backgrounds and thereby strengthen the global presence of our culture. ISKCON continues to attract new non-Indians via several methods. So here we can see some methods. We have Nagar Sankirtan. We go out in the streets. That's how we won the day in Sri Prabhupada's time, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. ISKCON devotees were routinely seen dancing and singing on the streets. It's not a new invention. It has been going on for thousands of years. We're just doing it again here. That's how we won the day. Festivals like Holi, you can see um, that Holi festival on the right, that's more than 100,000 people, not even one Indian there. That's in Utah, that uh, Taj Mahal-like temple, that's in Utah, of all places. And Prasadam, we serve Holi Prasadam, college lunch programs, we have cooking classes. This is a color fest, it's is very successful now, we're doing it all over the country. Then there's the ashram experience where we invite people from all backgrounds to come and live in the temple. Come and see what it's like to become a bhakta of the Lord. Understand Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vedic texts. And they come and they live for a few months, and some of them live their whole life. And then we have college preaching in clubs and other events, yoga classes, philosophy courses, and so on. These are great ways to showcase our Sanatana Dharma. When I was in college here in the university in Philadelphia, I started a bhakti club and we were preaching Bhagavad Gita, we had devotees from Iskand come and give classes, I would give classes. And from that program, we had like three or four people, college students, who became Hare Krishna devotees. Amazing. All we have to do is just share it with others. That's all it is. The book does its magic. See. So what can we do then? We need to encourage our own children to invite their friends to attend our rich cultural programs. Right? We, as temple leaders, of Sanatan Dharma, we can create a culture of inclusiveness by training our own members to be more welcoming, not raise their uh, eyes when the white person walks in. You see, so make an effort to do outreach, talk to your own friends, 
Make sure the language of the posters is understandable. You don't say Arti Puja and make sure and you can't assume they'll understand Arti Puja, Abhishek, Kirtan. You have to describe it. Then we'll make we'll see the difference. So my final conclusion, the Srila Prabhupada founding Acharya, he said that uh, the devotee's business is that he's always thinking how to do good to people in general. How do I accept this Krishna consciousness, this Sanatana Dharma? Simply 24 hours thinking, making plans. They want to see that everyone becomes a devotee of Krishna. So that is uh, my request to all of you. Let's open up your minds a little bit more. Be more inclusive and train your members to be nice to those of us who are not, who, visitors who are not of Indian backgrounds. Be open, be welcoming, and also realize this is our tradition. We are not Indians. We are servants of God. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Please give another big applause for all the uh, speakers. And before we open up for QA, I will just give uh, a few comments on each and every speaker's talk. First, on uh, Mr. Ma Dr. Mangalik's talk on participation in interfaith events. One thing we have to keep in mind is that if we do not have a seat on the table, we will find ourselves in the menu. So if we don't participate, let us not complain later on. And I can tell you myself, by participating in multi-faith organizations, I have been very nicely. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Multi-ethnicity, plurality, inclusion, that's what Hindus are, right? So one last question, we'll squeeze it in. And by the way, Indians try to dominate Hinduism, but if you really think about it, Nepali is 98% are Hindus. Someone has uh, um, Prabhupada, Prabhupada is here and, uh, and also we see a lot of uh, Islam followers all over the country. And uh, they are very highly dedicated to Lord Krishna. And also they follow pure Sadhvik Aha. And also they are, uh, they are, I can say sometimes they are practicing Hinduism more than Hindus, actually Hindus. What is the next generation? All other than in our Hinduism, if you are born to a Hindu family, you are a Hindu. We don't have any conversions. We don't do any conversion. But they are all practicing very nicely, very, very well, more than as the Hindus. And uh, what is going to be happen in the future, next? Are we going to consider as they are also Hindus? Or they will be as a separate uh, Islam people only? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the term Hindu itself is very you know, depending on who you ask, you'll have different answers. So even that question itself has its own question. Do we call them Hindus or we not? If for some person, being a Hindu means you have to be Indian descent, then they're not Hindus, but that's not what Hindu means. Hindu means, some. if by Hindu, you mean someone who understands Bhagavad Gita, who understands Sanatana Dharma, who practices the principles in their life, then how are they not Hindus? <laughs> that's what absolutely, absolutely. Guys, on this answer, standing ovation, guys. Come on. If they are practicing Hindus, they are Hindus. Birth doesn't give you a right.